it's just me and you. Head on down to the fishing hole. Grab your hat, get your pole. Let's go fishing when you're in the mood. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you in part by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha, conquer outdoors. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. Blue Cam, a cleaner running engine for a cleaner environment. I love to fish rivers and streams. As a matter of fact, when I was a young person, before having my driver's license, I used to fish all the nearby streams where we lived in southern Ontario. Many times I'd just ride my bike and I'd be in search of small brook trout and small brown trout. Then as I got older and I got my driver's license, I started to explore the tributaries that went into Lake Ontario and searching for what I heard to be a magnificent fighting fish, which was the steelhead and I started fishing the Great Lakes tributaries, and before you knew it, I was hooked on steelhead fishing. Those fish, though, were transplanted to the Great Lakes. This week, I'm back in beautiful British Columbia, and I get to do the real thing and catch steelhead and coho salmon in their natural rivers. You know, it's one thing to be steelheading somewhere. It's another one to be steelheading right here on Canada's west coast. This is amazing. We're here with Tracy Hiddle, and we've been staying at Kitimat Lodge, and uh, we're fishing one of the many rivers that are here. You know, I tell people, for some of the world-class fishing, when it comes to tributary fishing, whether it's fishing with a fly rod, using a center pin like I am, or using artificial lures, this area that's north of Vancouver in the Kitimat Terrace area has some of the best fishing, tributary fishing in the world. Notice I'm actually working my way a little bit downstream as opposed to being upstream, because I'd like that hook to stay in the fish's mouth. This fish was hooked very lightly. I had to pinch the barbs down because it's single barbless hook here, just caught in the tissue. And the line went around its snout, nice prime fish. Still not really dark, just a beautiful specimen. I don't want to hold them out of the water so long. So I'm just gonna gently, look, we're being so gentle with these fish. And there it goes. For the last five decades, Great Lake anglers have been enjoying steelhead fishing in all of the different tributary streams. Most of those streams are small. There are some large rivers, but in most cases, they're smaller tributaries. These anglers have had to learn to use long, soft rods, light line, and even lighter reels. And because many of the tributaries are so small, the fish have limited areas to hold in the pools. So the anglers let their baits drift downstream. And that's where the best technique for drift fishing is using long rods with center pin reels and using a small roll bag and presenting it to a fish while standing way upstream so that it drifts naturally to the fish and they never see the angler. You know, ever since I was a, a young fisherman, I was a river rat. River rat means that, you know, you go all along the shoreline and you fish the rivers and stuff. There's something about fishing moving waters. I have a real affinity with it. I love it. I love searching for the fish and where they're holding and hooking them. But, you know, the gear that you use is so important. And one of the things that I'm experimenting on this trip on the West Coast is the type of hook that I'm using. A lot of people use um, salmon egg hooks. They use octopus. These are styles of hooks. I'm using what's called a, a wide gap finesse hook. So if you look at this, it almost looks like a circle. Very fine metal, so I can't put too much pressure on the fish because the hook is very springy. So the advantage of using a springy or a thin wire hook is that it penetrates the fish really fast, really easy. Also, because it's single barbless hook here in uh, Western Canada, we've actually broken the barb off because there was a tiny barb on it, so it's barbless. 
So when I'm fighting it, because I don't have a drag on this particular center pin, it's a free spool, so I have to use my hand. It's called a, a rim spool because I actually use my hand on the rim to control the drag. So I'm using fairly heavy line. This leader is 15 pound fluorocarbon with a 20 pound main line because of the size of the fish that I can hook and the size of the river. So if I apply too much pressure, I can actually open the hook when the fish is fighting and thrashing on the surface and it can let go. So very important that you put the right amount of pressure when you're fighting these fish in the current. Closed captioning is brought to you by Cable's Eyewear Retainer. Lightweight, comfortable, adjustable and waterproof. This week I've been blessed to travel to northern British Columbia. I'm about 600 miles north of Vancouver and I'm fishing in the Terrace Kitimat area on a couple of very famous rivers. One is called the Skeena River and the other one is the Kitimat and all the different tributaries that are in that area. This is an amazing place to fish that produce trophy salmon and steelhead, especially in the fall and going through into the winter months right up until the next spring. You know, this is how simple it is to use the chunks of skein. I had a loop knot on there, so I did a perfect snell on the hook. And these are eggs that have been treated. This can be really messy, so it's very important to keep your hands clean, otherwise it'll get very sticky from the oil. You can see there's a little bit of milt coming off. What I really like, you know, I've used the spade to go all over. You can see I've got the eggs down there. When I need to get some, I just turn that around and then I can grab them and then I can close it. When I'm done fishing today, I'm gonna rinse that out because it can get really gummed up. I could wear it on my belt, but because I'm not wading out very far, I'm just keeping it on a rock here. So it's a very nice, tidy system. And you can see that hook. I'll just show you here. That very fine hook, if I hold it in my hand, you can barely see the tip of it right there. Can you tell them in British Columbia, if you look up into the sky, you can see the snow-capped mountains. I'm using my left hand to palm it. Good thing these rods have long foregrips. You can see where I've got my hand way up the rod. Long fish, it looks like a big female. I don't know if I can try to beach it uh, by myself in that net. Oh, good job, Italo. Isn't that beautiful? Right here in British Columbia, we're fishing with Tracy Hiddle. He's one of the top guides here out of Kitimat Lodge. This is what people come to British Columbia to catch these native fish. They're hard fighters, they're beautiful. And I wanna keep this one in the water as much as I can because it's such a gorgeous fish. And you can see how lightly it's hooked. Look, that hook is just in the side of the mouth. It was a perfect hook set. That's why I like those light wire hooks. But you gotta keep pressure on, because when it's barbless, when that fish shakes and rolls or jumps out of the water, they can throw the hook so easily. What a beautiful steelhead. The nice thing about barbless hooks is the hook just falls out. Look at this, with that bit of the sun that poked out, gorgeous fish. Look, I'm gonna slide them just over here. Beautiful steelhead, look. Hasn't been harmed, wow. Coho salmon are very aggressive. And the way you fish for them, if they're in deeper runs or faster moving pools, it's ideal to drift fish for them using roll bags or skeined eggs, even fly fish for them, and use artificial lures. But when the cohos especially are in large, deep, slow moving pools, one of the best techniques to use to catch them is actually to jig. A jig anywhere from one quarter to about three quarter ounce. It's almost like snap jigging and it seems to really trigger the cohos to chase that jig and really smash it. It's a very exciting way to fish. This is a hot pink bucktail jig with a pink head. The jigs I'm holding up in my left hand are a mix of bucktail and also some marabou and then some other feathers. 
These would work great for walleye, but here in British Columbia, they work extremely well when you're fishing in fast water for steelhead and salmon. White, black, and red for high contrast. This one is almost like a muddler minnow. It's just deer hair, looks very natural. This one has more orange in it. You can see that all of them have painted heads and they're all designed to do one thing, drop down in the water column really fast. So if you get a chance to come out here to British Columbia, and whether you're a deer fisherman or you like to use artificial lures, make sure to take a variety of jigs like this in different colors and different sizes. You won't regret it and you may land the biggest fish of the trip. Now this is very interesting fishing because we're fishing a very deep pool and I was told by our guide to just use a bright colored jig and to drop it down in the current and just snap it much like you would for walleye. And sure enough, look at I've got a really nice, this looks like a coho salmon. He's got a beautiful face on him. Look at really thick fish. You know, this outfit that I'm using is ideal. It's about uh, 10 and a half feet long. It's actually made for West Coast fishing, for using casting lures and jigging like this to try to get fish. And uh, it's just the right action. You can see it's got a nice bend on it. So this is, see if I can get the head just on this ledge. And that jig is just in the side of the mouth. There, beautiful. Isn't that a gorgeous fish? I'll tell you what, it's a heavyweight. But that's what fishing in BC is all about here. And we're fishing out of Kitimat Lodge and the guides are excellent. They know all of the river system, the tributaries, and where to get trophy fish like this. Hi, my name is Tracy Hittle. I'm the owner of the Kitimat Lodge. We live in a beautiful, pristine area up here in the Skeena Wilderness and the watershed that surrounds us, the Douglas Channel, the Nass River. These are some of the beautiful rivers that we entertain our guests in. Uh, anybody who's into chasing trophy steelhead, large Chinook salmon, all five species of Pacific salmon and halibut. Our location is strategically located in uh, the city of Kitimat with access to a lot of the coastal tributaries, uh, spirit bear encounters, so just a lot of beautiful scenery and rivers that we love to fish and you know anybody that's interested in wanting to come up and fish trophy waters with uh, either a spin rod, a fly rod, center pin fishing, you know we have the, the rivers that are for you. So love to have you come down. Fall is one of my favorite times to fish this area in British Columbia in the tributaries because all five species of Pacific salmon are in the river at that time. They start in about July and they go right through till about September. The steelhead start running as well and then by September, October, the coho salmon start running up the river. Some of them call these fish silvers because they're almost like platinum. They are hard fighting, they love to hit lures. And in the fall, you can have some fantastic fishing for both coho, salmon and steelhead. Tell you what, there's something about having a long line out. When you see that flow go under and you set the hook, at first it feels like bottom and then you feel, yeah, I think it's a head shake left and right and it's a wonderful feeling. Come on, let's have a look at you. Wow, that fish has rolled up in the line. Look at this, just going crazy. I love it. Oh. Those fish don't stand a chance with that net, let me tell you. Now, can you see that hook? It's hooked right in the roof of the mouth. I don't want to hold this fish out of the water too long. Right here from Kitimat Lodge in British Columbia. It doesn't get any better than this.
Because these large rivers are in valleys in the springtime, when there's a lot of runoff and going through into the summertime, there can be a lot of flooding. And when that flooding happens, a lot of the bottom gets shifted, especially sandbars and rock gravel bars are created. And it makes it very challenging to navigate these river systems unless you have a jet boat. So one of the things that I really look forward to when I come to BC is jumping in a jet boat and running up or down the rivers. I can breathe. I'm trying to put my back into this fish. This is a, a pretty hefty rod. It's nice to have that float on there because you can tell what the fish is doing. And I got my man here, Tracy, yes. Nice coal hole. Come on, a little closer. Look at that, done like a pro. Beautiful fish. Look at prime coal hole. From the Skeena River system, we're not too far from Kitimat. It's a, it's a love affair thing. Look at, bye bye beautiful. Hello folks, I'm Noel Geiger. I'm up in Terrace, BC, and uh, I've been promoting fishing up here for 40, 50 years, I've been an angling guide. I, I sold my lodge and uh, retired, so to speak. But anyway, I still welcome people up here. We have amazing salmon fishing, steelhead fishing, and trout fishing, Dolly Varden. And uh, you wanna come up, you wanna hire a fishing guide, just get a hold of me or uh, come up on your own and get a hold of me and uh, I'll give you some directions where to stay and where to eat. Not sure if I'll tell you the secret pools, but <laughs> it'll be it'll be darn good. You're you'd have a great time up here. Some of the rivers are quite wide, and there's only certain stretches that are four or five feet deep. This requires having proper wading gear, sometimes a wading staff or going out with a buddy, and going out sometimes to the middle of the river where the water can be as high as up to your waist. I find that the minimum is to have a wading belt around your waders, so in case you do slip in, the water doesn't go inside your waders. Once you find the right location, it's a matter of covering water because both the cohos and the steelhead can lay anywhere in these large, long, wide runs. You never know when a fish is gonna grab it. And when that float goes under, it's exciting. When you set the hook, these BC fish, it feels like the bottom. And then you feel the head shaking and your rod starting to pump and then the fight is on. Unlike the Great Lakes tributaries, the coastal tributaries for the most part are larger and the water is colder. Of course, most of the water either comes from springs or it's snow melt off from the mountains because the rivers here are all in the valleys. This is a long run. It's one thing to be fishing a smaller tributary where you have very specific pools, but here in a lot of the bigger rivers, the fish can be holding anywhere. I'm holding the rod high. One of the coaching techniques, you know, especially for a new fisherman, when they hook a fish is hold the rod up high. Can't rush this. You gotta just uh, take it easy. Man, I'm looking at this fish and it's hard not to stare at the mountains. We've got some sun shining on those peaks and it looks so majestic. Perfect, come on, just a few more feet. Oh, and that nice big net, gorgeous. Well done, Tracy. I wouldn't suggest anybody put their, their hands in a steelhead's mouth, but you have to be careful. And we're being so gentle with these fish because they're prized game fish. You don't want to hurt them. That's why we're keeping them in the water. Look, look at how brilliant. I feel like Vanessa White. This is, look, this is like a, the grand prize when you come out here. Look at beautiful female. She's looking at the camera. She's saying, please release me, let me go. Not a, not a 
mark on it. It's pristine. I'm gonna try releasing it right there, because it's got, look it, what a beautiful fish. When you fish in northern BC, you can either drive to location and walk into some of the tributaries, or you, they take you to where there's a drift boat, and you go in the drift boat, and you go down with the current, and you fish out of the drift boat, and you cast to fish holding areas until you finish the actual drift, which can be several kilometers, and then there's a takeout point where you go out. The other way is for you to leave a land lodge and go to the river's edge, where somebody meets you with a jet boat, you get in the jet boat and they take you up or down the river and sometimes even to smaller tributaries off that river. And then you either fish from the jet boat, but most likely you wade and fish from shore. We've been jumping around and fishing different tributaries because when you're here in the terraced Kitimat area, there's so many branches of river systems. This tributary is a little bit smaller. The water's crystal clear, a little bit different than where we were earlier. And I'm just walking down. I started up top and just drifting down along that far bank. Our guide, Gord, said the fish will hold over there. So I was just drifting down and sure enough, I've got a nice fish on. This is probably a nice coho. So this isn't by any means a really big fish, but the technique that I like to use is to try to get below the fish. So the fish is out, it's almost um, perpendicular to the current. I'm actually gonna pull it with the current and start to guide it in towards me. I think they're beautiful, even when they get dark. Some anglers will say, you know, we just wanna get the brighter fish, the silver fish, or just the steelhead. I think these are just as beautiful. There's a nice coho. He's not huge, but you can tell he's been in the river for quite a while and he's got that dark color underneath on the lower jaw. There. Okay, I'm just gonna hold him up for one second. He's gonna be ready to go. Look at this beautiful clear water. Watch. Beautiful fish. Canadian sport fishing has been brought to you in part by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha, conquer outdoors. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. Blue Cam, a cleaner running engine for a cleaner environment. So I'm, I'm not fishing very deep. There's the length, here's some of the skein that was that. This is how deep I was fishing. There's that bobber stop right there. That's this yellow thing that's in my hand. And my float is free floating. And then you see my sinker right here in front of me. And then my leader. So I'm only running about four feet. And that fish was holding at the tail out of this run. We've got our friend Ben, he was fishing way up there. 